want me to build you a bike, it's going to be built the Phil Piper way, or no way. My future wife said, let's go away. And I said, well, have you ever been to Malta? And she said, no, here we are. <laughs> All my life, I've had motorcycles, and it's a passion, you know. It's, I can't imagine not having a motorcycle. <laughs> I always liked being different to everybody else. I always wanted things that other people couldn't have. Never a dull moment in chopper world, you know. <laughs> Hi, my name's Phil Piper. I build choppers. This is one of my bikes here. It's a 1972 Harley Davidson Shovelhead, originally an FX model that looked absolutely nothing like it does today. Where did it all start with motorcycles? My old man was really to blame because he, he was a biker in his younger day. And uh, then obviously I came along. The seed was sown. He always used to tell me about his biking days and I was fascinated. When I used to go to school when we lived in Lytham St. Anne's, my mum would drop me at the, the bus terminus and there was a cafe there and all the local greasers used to hang out there and get their breakfast and they would have their old Triumphs and BSAs with their A-pangers and raggedy exhausts on and stuff. And I would just sit and look at these bikes for ages, just fascinated from them. And then that, it all just sprung from there. I don't think there's ever any question that I, I wasn't going to be a biker. It was just <laughs> there in my DNA sort of thing, you know? <laughs> I always liked being different to everybody else. I always wanted things that other people couldn't have. And, Generally, that means you've either got to have a ton of money, which I didn't have, or you've got to do it yourself. You can walk into a shop and buy a new Harley Davidson, but your next door neighbour can do that, and your uncle can do that, you know, so why would you want to do that? It's, I don't know. How I started building bikes for other people was... I would sort of build a bike for myself, and I would go to shows and rallies, and I never ever thought my bikes were anything special, and then... I would go and get a beer and come back and there'd be 30 people stood around the bike and I was like, what's up, is it caught on fire or something? And they're like, no, this bike's amazing. Like, yeah, it's all right. It's <laughs> and then it would all of a sudden pick up like best in show or something like that. I was like, Jesus, that's all I've got to do. I can build something much better than that. It was something that sort of came naturally to me. And then people started coming up to me at shows and saying like, do you build bikes for other people? I was like, no, not really. Said, well, would you? I said, yeah, I'd consider it, but it would have to be built my way. I was always very strict about that from the get-go. If you want me to build you a bike, it's going to be built the Phil Piper way, or no way. Custom bikes seem to attract lunatics like moths to a flame, and people get caught up in the ideology and the glamour of it all, and they think it's this incredibly glamorous thing. But, I mean, I used to have one customer and he wanted me to build this bike and he was a really wealthy guy and he wanted to come and check on the progress of his bike because I'm flying down to see you. And sure enough, he dropped in in a chopper, just parked it up in the field behind <laughs> and cut through. I, I suppose I've been quite lucky really because I've met some pretty colourful characters along the way. I built a bike. Um, for myself, it was about 2003. The chap who bought it, he phoned me up out of the blue, a South African guy, and it turned out he was the European Director of Procurement for Kellogg's. Pretty high-flying guy. And he saw it at a show, and he said, how much do you want? And I said, I don't know. And he said, well, just think of a number. He says, tell me, and it'll be in your bank account in the morning. I said, oh, okay, then I just dreamt up a number off the top of my head, and sure enough, it was in my bank account in the morning. Happy days. Never a dull moment in chopper world, you know? <laughs>
So I came out here for a few days, had a nice time. A couple of years later, he organized a big bike show in uh, Gozo at La Grotta. And then that was it. And then fast forward a few years, my future wife said, let's go away. And I said, have you ever been to Malta? And she said, no. So we came to Malta and she fell in love with the place. And here we are, <laughs> 13 years later. <laughs> Riding a chopper, I mean, this, for me, this is a fairly sensible chopper because it's got suspension. A lot of the bikes I built in the UK were not sensible choppers. They had no suspension, long forks, huge engines, two litre plus engines in them and everything like that. But I was always build them so you could ride them. I mean, for me, if I couldn't sit on the motorway at 90 miles an hour and take one end off the handlebars and the bike wouldn't rock steady, then it was no use to me. A bike has to perform as well as it looks sort of thing. I like performance. If I wanted to go slow, I'd buy a little hatchback, you know, it's, but it isn't. I, I like bikes because you can get from A to B quite fast and the, the secret is to look good while you're doing it as well. Hence <laughs> the chopper sort of thing. <laughs> Shovel Trouble 3. I wouldn't call it a pure chopper, although the frame has been chopped. You can't have a chopper with a standard frame, that's cast in stone. Chopped a load of brackets off and everything like that. Moved the suspension back, fitted a brand new late model six-speed gearbox from the electric start. It's a matching numbers 1972 bike, but the motor has been stripped. It's a lot faster than Messrs Harley and Davidson ever intended it to be back in 1972. So it's quite a lively little thing. Shovel Trouble 3 came from a shovel head chopper back in 1990. When I stripped the motor down, it, it was a disaster. Everything was on the, the brink of self-destruction. So that bike became known as Shovel Trouble and it, it became reborn as Shovel Trouble in 1992. And then this one, I bought this one. I thought I'm gonna buy a running bike. I'm not gonna buy a basket case. I bought it as a standard 72 bike. And I thought, come chop chop time when we're getting ready to give it the big chop, I stripped the motor down. What a disaster, everything is knackered inside it. So, Shovel Trouble 3, here we go again, you know? <laughs> All my bikes have a, a sort of a selling point or a USP or something like that. I got a, a local tattoo artist here, a chap called Martin Gaffer, and he airbrushed the logo on the top of the tank and on the rear fender, he did it all by hand. The number one Harley Davidson logos I had done by uh, a friend of mine who's a painter in England. He's one of the top UK custom painters, so I sent that to the UK. A little bit of colour just makes it pop, you know? It's, uh... <laughs> the magazines seem to love my bikes, I suppose, because they're not boring. I list, I've lost track of the number of magazine features I've done. I, think I have more front covers than anyone else in the UK. And, I've always been passionate about my bikes, you know, it's all my life I've had motorcycles um, and it's a passion, you know, it's, I can't imagine not having a motorcycle. <laughs> Apart from the shovel, I have my, my FXR, which is quite a sought after one now, that's a, a 1988 uh, bike, it was the last of the hand welded frames from Harley Davidson. I have my 1971 Norton Commando, which I love dearly because it's just a beautiful bike. I've got a 1976 Triumph Bonneville. It makes me grin like a fool every time I look at it because it's such a beautiful bike. I'm, I'm very fortunate because I have a good cross-section of bikes. You know, I have everything from choppers to club style to classics. I've got a Supermoto, which is my day-to-day -day bike. Um, I've even got a big Kawasaki, which I'm building into a street racer, a Kawasaki 1100. Rode it around for a bit, but it was fairly standard, and it's not what I want, so already the, the, the chopping process has started. The burning question is, which one do I ride today, you know? <laughs> so I'm lucky, because I sort of appreciate most motorcycles. I won't say all, because some of them just leave me stone dead. If, if you show me a, a Japanese thing that's just encased in plastic, you know, I, I can't tell a... Honda, from a Yamazuki, from a Hooflung Dung to whatever you run sort of thing, you know? Because uh, they all look the same, they're all like designed in a wind tunnel. 